Yo, what is up, ladies and gentlemen? Previously on my roll with Andy, the high-level white belt, Nogi roll that we did, he ended up having a bloody nose, so we had to stop the roll short, and this is going to be the continuation, the part two of our roll. So let's get into it. We begin this roll on the feet, and I'm going to just take the back of his head and his tricep and sit into a butterfly position and turn that into a half guard position. My goal here is just to use my left foot as distance management to keep him at bay while I decide on which way I want to sit up from the half guard and get the sweep. He's going to try to like encroach on my on my body position, use using both of his arms for a two on one grip. I'm going to bring my knee shield back in, kind of keep him at bay. And then what I'm going to do is when he starts to turn and try to angle out and get his foot out, I'm going to kind of sit into him and then I'm going to get like a, a lazy arm drag position, turn that into a sweeping position. And now I'm in the over under, which I don't usually play a lot in the no gi scene. It's a lot harder to grip and hide your arm for the Kimuras, but I'm going to give it a shot here. Now that I've got my sweep, I'm going to modify my over under position by getting into a tripod stance. Andy is going to start going for his submission attempt by taking his left leg across my neck, trying to set up a rubber guard. I'm going to counter that by getting into a tripod stance and you can't really see my left side, but I'm stuffing his right leg in between my legs. Once it's in between, I'm going to drop down from the tripod stance and start setting up a sneaky submission that's uh, known by Bernardo Faria, the dog bar, which is the over under knee bar position. Now, there's a reason I'm not setting it up properly. I'm not figure fouring my legs, and that's because Andy at the time of this recording is still a white belt. I don't want to hit a submission like that. I'm easing into it so he can recognize that his leg is in danger. I'm also angling my body off to the side, and there's a specific reason why I'm doing that. I'm going to demonstrate by showing a clip of Bernardo Faria hitting the dog bar the proper way where your weight drops down. I'm angling off to the side because his leg is so straight now I can hit the pass from the dog bar. I knew I wasn't going to go for the knee bar submission there, but straightening out his leg so much allowed me to pass into side control and get my points there. So pretty much that whole affair was how I like to set up submissions and use those submissions to pass into uh, different positions. I like to ease into my submissions, especially with lower belts, give them an opportunity to recognize that they're in danger, but not so fast that they can't react to it. And then when they react to it, I use that to pass so that was pretty much my standard affair dealing with lower belts now that i'm in side control i'm really going to start dropping my left shoulder onto andy's face my hands are gable gripped and he's going to start using the mat wall to uh turn his position and when he gets that elbow knee connection i'm going to hit a top spin start attacking the back and he's going to recognize his back is now in danger he's going to hit a grand b roll i'm not able to follow him all the way and instead of staying on my knees i'm going to stand right up and reset the position this is something that i do a lot in gi and no gi where i just stand up back away, reset the position, reassess, and figure out how I want to deal with the next set of problems. Andy isn't going to make it easy for me by using his hooks behind my calf, but when he sits back to his back, that's my timing and that's my position to go for the pass. So Andy's going to start using his left foot to try to hassle me, and I'm going to force his left foot to face the left wall, and when he does, I'm going to take my right knee and then knee cut pass through the guard, solidifying inside control. Now that I'm inside control, I'm going to make this a little bit more difficult for Andy by transitioning over into the mount position. Now that I'm in the mount position, I'm going to solidify the position just a little bit by bringing my knees closer to his shoulders. And he's going to realize that he's in a bad spot and he's going to hit a massive hip bridge, but I'm able to post on my left arm and float above him. And now my left leg has become my first hook. I'm going to sit to my right leg and roll him over my right leg and then take the back position. Now that I'm in the back, I want to fight one of his arms with two of my arms. So I'm trying to trap it trap one of his arms with my left arm he's able to stop it the first time and Andy's going to start angling his back towards the mat if his back is on the mat I can no longer be on his back so I'm trying to hip under him and keep my chest to his back he's going to start getting his shoulder on the mat so I'm going to lock him in with the body lock position and Andy's now going to have to fight my arms my right arm starts to come up around his neck he's going to do a good job of fighting that I'm still trying to trap one of his arms with my legs so I can use both my arms to fight one of his arms and finish the position and he's going to start bringing his right arm down to stop me from uh, trapping one of his arms and I'm going to lock the body lock position once again and Andy's gets up on his elbow which gives me the opportunity to get deeper under his neck now I've got the body lock position and now I can start fighting for his left arm to go 
uh, under my leg and I now I'm able to trap his left arm. So now it's going to be the two on one position that I was looking for to finish from the back. Now that I have the two on one position, we are entering the end game. I'm going to start hitting a rear naked choke position and he's actually able to pry my hands free. So I need to readjust the grip. Once I'm able to readjust, I hit a nice squeeze and I get the tap for the fin. So let's get right into these takeaways. There's only one and that's going to be the application of submissions on lower belt. So ease into these submissions. This is a knee bar that Andy even told me afterwards he wasn't really sure of what I was doing. So that's why I ended up going really, really slow. So when you're working with lower belts as an upper belt and you want to hit these submissions that they're technically not allowed to do, make sure you hit them very slowly. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys for watching the video and Andy, congratulations on your blue belt. We have some news. We have moved from California, from the Logic BJJ team, back to the Midwest, back to Watson's Martial Arts, where my jujitsu journey began. So we will be bringing new roles in a new gym very, very soon, but we still have a bunch of Logic videos as my farewell to the Logic team and California. So stay tuned for that. Thank you guys for watching the channel and thank you guys for supporting me. It truly means more than you know. I hope you guys have a fantastic holiday and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.